Greetings fellow train simmers. Welcome to another train sim classic video and welcome to Boston, Massachusetts as this is part of the newest route by G tracks in the gang. Uh, it's well, it's kind of confusing. It's Boston Albany Railroad, but it only goes from Boston to Springfield and the New York Central operated on the Boston and Albany in this time period. Yeah, it's 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 a little confusing. It's basically Boston to Springfield, both cities within the state of Massachusetts, and uh, it covers about a hundred miles of the BNA line uh, between the two towns. There's a couple of branch lines here and there, some large rail yards, uh, major cities throughout. Of course, Boston, uh, Worcester, Springfield, Framingham, multiple industries, all that good stuff. Um, just. There should be a lot packed into this route, considering where it's at. Uh, so this released today, the 17th of March, 2023, and it was only $30, $29.99. Uh, it, of course, is on sale right now, part of the spring sale, for a few bucks less. I think you can get it for about 26 bucks. Now, that is U.S. dollar. I've seen some reports of people saying it's different pricing uh, in other parts of the world. I don't know much about that, but I do know it's about 30 uh, U.S. dollars here. Um, but this area, just to, to give a, a broad stroke, uh, hopefully a quick broad stroke, it's just a relatively flat region. There's some hilly areas to the west of us, uh, more towards Springfield and mid Midway, like Worcester. Uh, some at about 1%. Uh, the major, or I don't want to say ruling grade because it sounds kind of dumb saying it, but the ruling grade part of the route is uh, Charlton at about almost 900 feet. It's considered the, the summit. But uh, speeds for passenger trains, on average, were about 65 mile an hour. Freight was about 60. Uh, and there was mostly a double track main line through the area. Now, a lot of this has changed. I think this is set in like the 50s or the 60s, I think it's supposed to be. So a lot has indeed uh, changed over the years. So you will probably notice. If, if you know the area well, you'll probably notice a lot of things different. I don't know the area too well. I just know a little bit about the B&A and New York Central and all that. And I'm going to try and convey that here as we go along but uh this is going to include a uh, long distance passenger service uh some commuter stuff and then of course freight yard ops all that stuff and uh yeah i think it's the 60s uh so it's, it should have like searchlights and, and semaphores and all that good stuff so also a tiny bit about the boston and albany uh it was essentially created in about 1870 from a merger of numerous railroads in the area there were just tons and tons of railroads in the midwest northeast uh, united states uh, and a lot of them merged and of course there's you know the big four or five whatever today and then you know several class twos class three so on and so forth they have all dwindled and died essentially but there used to be a ton of them so it was a merger that created the bna line which runs from boston to albany of course the namesake of the two capital cities Albany being in the state of New York, uh, Boston being in the state of Massachusetts. Uh, in about 1900, the railroad leased the rights to what eventually became uh, New York Central running passenger and freight ops with its own equipment on the Boston and Albany. Uh, the BNA also interchanged with other New England railroads like the New Haven uh, and Hartford and various other small ones. Now, included stock with the route is as follows. You're going to get the all-new Alco PA from G-Tracks, which is over there to the left. You can probably hear it humming away. And we're going to take a look at that first. I'm going to do things a little different today. I'm going to try and condense videos so they're not two hours long because I know a lot of people love that oh so dearly. Uh, so we're actually going to start with the rolling stock today, and then we'll take a look at the route after and just kind of hop around and take a look at things. But you're going to get the all-new Alco PA, yes, a new locomotive for Train Some Classic that comes with a route, not entirely rehashed and refurbished like we tend to get 99% of the time, sadly. Uh, you're going to get the Alco FA. That's all I'm going to say about that. You're going to get the Alco RS3, and what's cool about the Alco RS3 that comes with this, this is the Diesel Workshop Alco RS3, which is a very, very nice piece of equipment for North American Train Sim. Uh, I'd say almost the 30 buck price alone is worth it for that because not only will you get that, but you'll get a you know a bunch of era appropriate rolling stock and of course this massive map. So 
and and the PA, of course, which I haven't even taken a look at. I can hear it over there rumbling away. I'm trying not to pay attention to it. So you'll get the RS3, of course. Then you're going to get the old Alco HH600, which is just an old diesel switcher, which we've had for a very long time. It's, I think it's essentially freeware, or it has been. Um, but it's, you know, it's one of the oldest switchers in North America, oldest diesel switchers anyway. So uh, you're, of course, going to get four locomotives. Now, the RS3 comes with what says in the editor when I was placing all this down that there is a freight and passenger variant. So we'll take a look at that. I don't know what that's going to entail. Uh, and then, of course, you're going to get the absolute smorgasbord of rolling stock, which you see here before us. Now, I did not lay out everything. Uh, a lot of these routes recently with uh, high iron and, and G-tracks, namely only this time, really, you just get a ton of rolling stock. It's very old in terms of rail works or train some classic if you will but you're going to get a lot of it it is era appropriate a lot of it's good for yard filler and they actually included low poly yard filler so i don't know if that means if this stuff is high poly uh, but they did include low poly yard filler to just make the yards look more alive because man back in the 40s 50s 60s places like this up in the northeast were just thick just popping all kinds of stuff going on, all kinds of action, rail cars, all that good stuff. So you're going to get quite a bit. So uh, we'll start with that. We'll start with looking at the railing, the railing, the rolling stock, and then we'll get over to that uh, that PA chugging away over yonder. And I'd also like to say before we get started, so works cited for this route, it is labeled G tracks. Of course, you know, a lot of us know G-Tracks. We've got the uh, P42DC, SP Cab Forward, the old Alco RS1, Portland Terminal, Stevens Pass, some of the best stuff. It is it is a bit aged now, uh, but some of the best North American stuff came from Rick Grout and G-Tracks, uh, which, you know, some, some very nice stuff. Like I said, a bit old, but at the time it was, it was top tier. Still kind of is, all things considered, if you think about it. So Rick Grout, a.k.a. G-Tracks, is the main dev of this project. Uh, put it all together, for the most part, scenery and assets for Boston, so this area here, uh, stations and depots, and, of course, the Alco PA, the, uh, the all-new locomotive chugging away right over there behind the roundhouse, which I didn't, I didn't mean for that to happen. It just, it just turned out like that. We'll go look at it. I promise two seconds. There's also Mike Stefan, which I'm sure a lot of you know as well. Uh, he's made a lot of freeware stuff uh, over the years for his website called Golden Age of Railroading, which uh, has got some nice stuff, you know, for, for olden times, if you will, a more specific period. Uh, he generally provides a lot of the rolling stocks, a lot of the boxcar stuff like that you see here. Uh, rolling stock is, is Michael Stefan. Um, you know, and it's, it is nice for the, the age. I, I do appreciate the rolling stock from that era because that's really all there is, and it's honestly not all that bad uh so he provided a lot of that um let's see i think he did some track work some signaling of course the freight cars uh i think he did scenery around springfield and worcester which of course we'll take a look at uh and then there's let's see jim friedland who did uh i think he helped with like uh sacramento northern he did some scenarios so i think he did the scenarios for the route and rural scenery so you know not city by rural i hate saying that word rural rural scenery uh and then wayne campbell of course probably needs no introduction again from a lot of you uh he made cvp uh which is a freeware route hosted on railworks america which is just a fantastic route set what i don't know between like the late 40s and 70s and it's just scenic as hell and it's super cozy and it's just a neat neat little route he is He's got some root building talent, uh, that is for sure. But uh, he did some terrain textures, vegetation, building assets, and uh, things like that. All right, so enough blibbity blabbing. Let's go look at the uh, the rolling stock over here. So first up, we've got your assorted collection of 40-footers. I tried to kind of line them out. And, of course, we're in Boston. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you noticed a lot of this stuff would not have been sitting here in real life. For the most part, again, a lot of this yard has changed. And if you're familiar with Train Sim World and the Boston Providence route, this is the same same city, same area, south, south stations right over there. That whole deal. 
Um, so yeah, you know, this isn't prototypical the way I have it set up. I just laid the stuff down so we could quickly take a look at it here. But these are all your 40 footers. So we've got Boston and Albany lined up first. And again, these are fairly old models, but they still look pretty decent. You know, they've got that old look, old 40 footer when they were kind of small. Uh, the logos and everything look very nice as they tend to do. Um, you know, so I don't really see anything there. This is the other uh, B and A. I know it's Boston and Maine. These two are Boston and Maine. This is Boston and Albany. Boston and Maine. They didn't get the you know legal issues, all that BS. You don't see it on there. You know, somebody might make a patch at some point. I don't know. Uh, but the weathering on these look you know pretty good. I mean, for what they are, there's still some nice old old rolling stock. I've never really had a problem with them. Um, you know, and it's it's. It's freeware, but you get a ton of it. There's a, a gray one there. Uh, this green one here, what's that supposed to be? Eerie or something like that. So that's the first set of 40-footers. We got another set right here. New Haven. Of course, looking very nice as always. Logo looks great. Um, some of the numbers look a little... A little, little choppy, chalky. Um, but the lettering on there looks good as well. It's got just the right amount of weathering um you know overall like when it's a brighter color you kind of notice the the lower resolution kind of texturing to it um you know but it's it's not the absolute end of the world uh it's kind of funky looking too there it definitely could be some some sharper logos but it is what it is you're not really getting this route for all the box cars honestly and this is the other new haven so you've got three new haven 40 footers we got some new york central 40 footers here logo looks pretty good. I've always liked this green one here. We've got another brown with the star and the pacemaker. This is a unique uh, boxcar. Interesting looking uh, boxcar and livery and all that good stuff. Again, some of the logos look a little little low res and choppy, but uh, is that all for the 40 footers? Nah, we got a yeah, we got a couple more. Those are the fifties. So we got Pennsylvania Railroad, <laughs> a couple of those. Uh, we got the Pittsburgh and Lake Erie. So this is new. That's kind of neat. It's New York Central System, but it's P and L E. I don't know if we had these before. Possibly we did. Maybe they showed up in like uh, da -da 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 -da. what's that one steam route that was uh, that's like freeware now. I don't know. Maybe they were on there, but. Uh, P and L E that looks nice. New York Central again, P and L E, and then Peoria and Eastern, which again I think that might be new. So this might be new. Uh, the darker box cars though, like the browns and the reds, which they all tended to be back in the day. Um, you know these look okay, but when you get to the brighter colors, you kind of notice the uh, the you know not not so sharp kind of textures and lettering and all that stuff. Over here we got the double door fifty footers. Uh, New York Central, you can definitely see that logo is not the best, um, but overall looks okay. Some of the lettering looks pretty sharp on there, which is nice. Got that kind of stencil look to it, which is cool. More New York Central, Pennsylvania Railroad, and we got some waffles, which, uh, you know, these have been used in a lot of other routes over the years. Uh, for train some classic, but uh, it is what it is. You get a lot of it, so you can look at it, you know, like that, I guess, if you want to. Uh, and then we've got, of course, the Cabis, uh, New York Central. Let's kind of scan around here. I don't think these models are inherently new either. Uh, a couple of bits and bobs may have been added, of course. The appropriate logo, paint, all that good stuff. the uh, bay window. I uh, got another one here with the jade or whatever it was called green. And this one should be New Haven. And of course we've uh, we've seen a lot of these and then this one. What the hell is that? Boston and Maine? It's supposed to be Boston and Maine? I think it is. But yeah, it's just, you know, old old cabooses are old in uh, in train sim. So that's uh those are those are cabooses. Uh, over here, we got some assorted again. You know, all I don't think any of this rolling stock, the freight cars are new, really. I don't even think any of the passenger cars are new. If they are, please correct me. Uh, because we always kind of get the same stuff over and over again. So here's some flat cars. I just chose some some 
you know, varying things. We got some reels on there, some pipe with these bulkheads. Uh, I do like the old stuff, you know, so don't get me wrong. This, um, you know, it's, it's not the newest and the best, but I, you know, when I'm running stuff in the 50s, 60s, you know, this this is what you run. That's pretty much what there is. It's, it's the best of this era for the most part. Got a flat car here with some tarp stuff. We got the trailers on flat cars. I think they added some new logos. So it's essentially, again, the same model assets, all that good stuff, just new logos. I don't think there was New York Central before in any of the packs. Um, but you got two of those. I think the other two, so you're going to get four. I just put two down. I think the other two are going to be um, blanks. But uh, those look nice. Nice to have a pop of color. Got the 52-foot low-sided guns with some barrels and scrapage in there. Just just a couple of random things. Like, this, this is not it. So there's way, 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 way more. There's probably... Jeez, you probably put down 60 cars of, like, all the variants that, that usually come with these packs. Here we have the 70-ton offies with the ribbits. Or bolts or whatever. Uh, Boston and Albany. 70-tonners, of course. Those look all right. We got the ribbited New York Central BNA. Uh, I just put two down. They're the same. One's got coal. One's got uh, rock. Should probably take a look at that. Texture in there don't look the worst. I think it's um. I think it's you know been used from before. We got some air slides over here. I've always loved the air slides, man. These cars look so cool. Um, but yeah, again, it's you know it's just more reused uh, rolling stock with some new logos and all that good stuff, which you know I'm sure takes a lot of damn time to do. But uh, some. Some very new, older cars would be awesome. I'd love to see some stuff like that. We got some New York Central Pullmans. The uh, the first one here, I think this is a sleeper. Yeah, you can see little rooms here. Roomettes. You just lay them big old chairs down. Manistee River. A lot of them had their own names back in the day. Still tend to. Uh, then we got the dining car here. I'll try and get in here and take a look around. Yikes! Whew. That's not really modeled. This the eating area might be modeled. That's pretty neat. You know, again, it's it's old. It's a lot of it's. They're just they're you know, transient classic Pullmans. Nothing. You know, this isn't why you buy this route you know what I mean let's let's be honest um, and then we got the regular chair car coach car so there's like a 48 seater and a 60 seater I think I just put the 48 one down here and they did put updated uh, characters in here so <laughs> GG for that because a lot of the older stuff like off a uh, golden age of uh, railroading has the really like scary looking people on it but, you know, that's that's how stuff look in, in Railworks and MSTS in 2010 and up. So, that's that's that. So, we got some heavyweights hidden back here behind. We got the nice uh, mail car here. There's going uh, to be two of these, New York Central, I think, one and two. I just put one down. Which, uh, again, is not um, not not new. I'm, I'm pretty pretty certain. We got the coach, New Haven, of course, and there's different variants of this. This, of course, is the New Haven one. And then yonder, we've got the baggage. Did I say that one down there was the baggage? That one down there is mail. This is baggage. Bagage. Yeah, so that's, that's just a, a general representation of the stock that you're going to get. Let's go ahead and go look at that new loco. I lied. I lied. There's uh, there's more. You got these old reefers here. So you got uh, the the white one. There's different variants. Uh, you know, with the hoods open up top, where they'd uh, chuck down the big old blocks of ice. So you got the steel, steel one right here. You got the wooded one right there, and a yellow, yellow one. All right, now we can get to the Alco Pa or P A. This is the new locomotive, and I might have to turn the sound down. That, that sucker's a little bit loud. Let's go ahead and turn that down just a skosh. All right, so 
I'm sure a lot of you know that G-Trax had a PA model in Santa Fe livery on his website for a very long time, and it didn't look like Train Some Classic. It didn't look like something for Unreal or Train Some World either, so whatever that was all ideally and realistically about, who knows, but the PA turned up here after all. And of course, New York Central livery, you're going to get the PA and PB. The B is the booster unit you see in, uh, in second position there behind the, uh, the leading locomotive. And I just got a string of cars behind it because we're going to try and pull it, see what the physics are all about and all that good stuff. But a little tiny bit about the Alco PA, of course, diesel built to haul passengers. Yes, I have got freight cars back there. I'm trying to represent weight. We'll, we'll see what happens. Uh, but anyway, Alco and GE partnered to build these units 1946 to 1953 at about 297 units, and they had 2,000 horsepower. They used the Alco 244 V16 prime mover, and it, of course, was turbocharged like most Alco things. So the P designation, as in PA, was for passenger or high-speed passenger. I don't know if I'd call 65 high-speed. And they were, of course, Coco, bogey. Uh, and not Bobo, like the, uh, what's the other one? The F.A. is a Bobo. Bobo. Anyway. Uh, so New York Central, I think, had four. Um, geez, they had, uh, they had a couple PA1s and PA2s. And then the units ranged from, I think, 4,200 on the number boards to 4,203. And then there were some that were 4,208 to 4,211. Uh, later on down the line and uh, looks like the numbers are correct there's 4211 here in front of us but uh, they didn't have a whole lot they had a couple and uh, here it is let's take a look at it you know the model looks okay it really does but you know texturing goes a long way I feel like that's all I ever hear I feel like that's all I ever say probably because it is but it makes a huge huge difference this thing uh, it just looks kind of really flat and and featureless like the model is there you know you can make a great model like you know, a lot of people make great models. They, they show them off, like, look at this model I made. And then when it actually, you know, comes down to making the thing look real and get those textures on there, that's another ball game entirely. And apparently that's much harder to do. I sure as hell don't know how to do it. But some updated textures uh, would be nice on this thing. Uh, the livery looks pretty correct. It's got a nice logo. It's fairly sharp. The stripes look okay. They're fairly sharp and squared on the front. Number boards look all right. I don't really see any kind of weird stuff. It actually looks like there's a bezel over the light there, which, uh, you know, unlike some developers, I won't point any fingers or name any names. The numbers and letters sit out over that. Uh, the marker is something left to be desired. It uh, doesn't look that great. <laughs> Same with the headlight. Um, you know, I don't know, like... You know, I, I feel like if, if I were G-Trax and I was working on this model, I probably would have, you know, maybe worked with Diesel Workshop and see if they wanted to kind of polish it up a bit. And then it could have really, really been an outstanding product. But, yeah, there's there's no actual, like, glass there. It's just, it's just yikes. Uh, another thing that helps with this being New York Central is it's black. So it's so much harder to notice a lot of textures with black. Now, you can do black like too dark where it's like the black hole where no color emits at all and it just looks ridiculous this isn't that this has got a nice kind of you know worn kind of grayish black to it uh but it still could use some weathering and, and all that good stuff um but the stripes on it look pretty damn good they're uh looks like they're gapped in a lot of places where they should be on the, uh, the door panel there and the seams um yeah the uh, lightning stripe looks pretty good. This was called the lightning stripe, by the way, for those that may not be aware. The numbers look pretty good. The actual New York Central on there looks really good. Um, you know, this 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 looks all right. It really looks all right. The uh, the undercarriage, the buggies look pretty good, and the trucks. 
Got some nice almost 3D springs on there. Those look pretty nice. Brake pads look okay. They're actually uh, they actually look like a brake pad too. You know, it's, it's not just like a black or a gray color. Uh, but again, some you know, a lot left to be desired. A lot, you know, some weathering and all that could have could have gone a long way down here. Uh, you know, for what it's worth. See a little leakage right there. But yeah, some rust and corrosion down there and all that would have been uh, would have been nice. Would have gone a long way. You know, who's to say that, uh, you know, I don't know. I don't know anything about repainting, but you could, you know, someone could possibly update something about this. I'm not really sure. Because it seems like it's got some good bones. It does seem like it's got some good bones. Let's look at this uh, vent mesh. It does look like just a regular 2D texture, but it actually doesn't look that bad, especially from back here. And there, there is a bit of depth to it, so it's not just, you know, there's actual parts of the model there, which uh, looks nice. The vents right here look nice as well. You can see straight through. Again, a little bit of shading on there would have gone a long way. little porthole got your vents in the back is there actually 3d yeah the the model is like you know c compared to like what we normally get on the steam store for north american stuff this thing is uh this thing is a step up for shizzle uh now the top doesn't look all that great it looks very it almost looks like somebody just dumped like a bunch of uh fuel or oil all over the top of it um, but it, then it got digitized into like 8-bit. It's got that kind of weird sheen over the top. Um, it's, it's not that great. Doesn't look all that great. There's your, uh, giant fan, which looks kind of funny. The actual fan blades look a little funny there. And the B unit should largely be the same... Uh, let's see, we've got a couple of portholes. Yeah, it's just a cabless unit, essentially. I don't know if they had hostler stands on these. I think they were just meant to be paired up. They might have, or they might have just opened the door up or something like that. I don't know. Not sure. All right, let's get in this son of a gun. Oh, dear Lord, what is all that? Get out of here. Uh... All right, well, it's not deafening inside, which is nice, I guess, but um, right off the bat, it looks very, like, blurple in here. It's got kind of like a violet hue to it. Um, I'm seeing some issues with, with the, the seams in the model itself. I can see right through this crack there to the railroad, uh, off to the right there. So that's that's not great. You can tell the, the texturing in here isn't super great either. Um, you know, again, the modeling looks okay. The, the textures and the grime and all that would, would have gone a long way. Um, you know, even the top. Just, it's just not, uh, it, there's like, there's, there's no depth to it. It's, um, you know, it almost looks 2D. Uh, now as far as the interior, it kind of looks like this, but I feel like, it's it's missing a bunch of stuff as well like the the i don't know if it's just the angle the way you sit in this thing because you can't really change the angle unless you edit it but uh it just seems like it's missing some stuff like some of the gauges right in front of the engineer side look a little off um you know it, it, it could be the angle you know I've, I've not sat in one but i've seen plenty of pictures of uh one of the ones that's being restored, which I think he even got some specs off of. Um, but yeah, it needs some depth in here badly. There's the light. That helps a little bit, but then it just brings out this very blocky, meh, texturing. The light colors no, uh, honestly don't look that bad either. They're yellowish, you know, so it's not like uh, DTM white. Yeah, it's kind of funky. Let's take a look at the different views. Fireman's side. 
Ah, uh, this looks very bare. I feel like the fireman's side should have something right here. Um, right in front. You can see some bleed down there on the ground as well, on the model. It's a bit yikes. Let's see what these switches do over here. Nothing. Nada. Alright, we'll go back here. Alright, what can we mess with? We got some lights. Call. Headlights. Oh, uh, I'm kind of scared to look at what they look like. Alright, we'll do... Alright, so that switch moves like shit out of a goose's rear. Uh, that's like super fast. Uh, Alright, so that's front dim. It's got that that not so fun flare effect going on um, there's actually kinda like a, a funky top and bottom flare going on too if you look at extreme north and south of the headlight center headlight it's almost like uh, there's a, a line or like a laser of light going straight up and down just kinda funky it's interesting the color the color doesn't look all that bad um, but it still doesn't look good either. It's front bright. Looks largely the same. I guess it's just going to change on the... Uh, man, I, I hate the way this thing moves. There we go. I think it's just going to largely change like how bright it is when it gets darker out. Cab heater. You can turn that off and on. Man, them bezels around them knobs do not look good. Good night. That's, uh, that's probably one of the worst looking things in here. Jeez. Uh, gauge lights. Uh, I feel like they're on the right track. They've got that that deal where the the light is kind of like emitting from the bottom, like it's you know it's it's close. That kind of old look. Um. Yeah. Defrost. Not sure if that actually does anything. Probably not. Emergency stop. What do we got here? Can't do gin fuel controller. Uh, fuel pump. Got a reverser. Now that thing takes a minute when you're using WASD to uh, lock into place there. Uh, can you open the window? <laughs> I mean, it's not the best sounds in the world, but uh, it, it does work. It does go up and down. Can you open the door? No, I do not believe so. Let's see what we got on the back wall here. Can't change uh, MU headlight uh, number board. You can't click on any of those gauge lights. You can't do class lights. So there's red. Which looks eh. green. Or wait a minute. I went to white. Green. And then white. Yeah, they don't. They don't look good. Let's leave it at that. Um, start, stop. Any of these do anything? Negative. What about down here? Step lights? Nope. None of those warning lights seem to illuminate. All right. Now, I I like I like Mike, and I love smoke box equipment. But this whole advanced braking thing, dear lord, just don't don't do it anymore. And if you do, don't make it to where the controls are so sticky because it just does not feel good uh, to operate. Remember, you're up. It may be realistic, but you're using a freaking mouse and keyboard. Okay, so it doesn't really translate that fluid. I'm. I'm I try and be nice, but uh, you know it's it's getting old. It's it's it's, and then you always read a, a Dolezal article, and it's all it talks about is freaking advanced brake, like it's, you know, the golden goose with golden eggs. It's just not. I'll just leave it there. All right, uh, let's get the HUD on there. See, so you can already tell turning the F4 HUD on because it it's back and forth. Release, apply, release, apply, release, apply. Go ahead and release it.
All right, so the brake sounds weren't terrible. They didn't really sound realistic, but at least it wasn't like, you know, making your ear holes bleed uh, like some of the brake sounds as of late, which uh, just don't, don't, don't really sound that great. Did I just hear the freaking, the GE whoop? I know this thing was GE and Alco, but that sounded like a freaking Jeevo brake compressor, air compressor. Did these have that? <laughs> Genuine question. If you know, let me know. Uh, I hope that wasn't stolen from, you know, like the freaking something else, like, you know, one of the old Jeevos or, or uh, P42 or anything like that, because that's... That's weird. Wait, P42 wouldn't have that. All right. Getting ahead of myself. All right. Brakes released. We are forward. And. What else do I have to do here? I can't move. Why can't I move? Rotator valve. Nah. All right. All right. I may have to look at the manual. <laughs> this, uh... Yeah, let's look at the manual. Pause. All right, dingus moment. After looking around, there's a selector switch over here, which conveniently blends in with the chair. Uh, and some of the stuff is odd because there's stuff listed in the manual. I've looked at the manual, it's a fairly detailed manual about operation. A lot of the stuff it lists, and then it says non-functional. So I'm like thinking I'm totally missing something out of just standard type operation. And I wasn't, it was just a, a hidden selector switch. So we'll set it to one. I think you can set it to dynamic. Let's see. Did these even have dynamic? I'm not sure. Set on two. And everything is like delayed. So everything's kind of a pain in the ass to move around with the mouse or keyboard. It, it already kind of pissed me off a little bit. Just the fact that this is taking way too long to, to move this thing. Yeah, this, these controls do not feel good at all. Good girl. Oh, my God. All right. Try not to rage. It's, it is such a pain in the ass moving the selector handle. There we go. Okay. Forwards set to two. There's a bunch of other stuff, like the dead man's cock. Cut out cock? Uh, which does nothing. I don't know why it's there. Kind of like heat. It's like a train some world thing where it's just there for no god darn reason. Uh, there's also this, which I found, double heading cock, and the selector cock, which basically just dumps all your air. And then you've got the rotator, which changes your types of braking. Um, passenger, freight, even though these typically did passenger, and you want to leave a little bit of air on, uh, and all that good stuff. And it, of course, has advanced braking, so that in itself is kind of annoying. So I decoupled, thinking, you know, maybe that was the issue, is I was hooked up to freight, and you're not supposed to be hooked up to freight. Actually, it looks like it recoupled, so that's fantastic. All right, so we will uncouple. Forward, brakes are off. We'll give her one notch. All right, so it builds up amps way too quick and kind of lurches. Uh, it doesn't feel overly powered, though, in notch one, which is okay. It's kind of creeping along, but it did jump forward. And then as soon as you... You see the camera like moving forward and backwards real quick. It's like being in a car and slamming on the brakes. That's basically what it kind of seems to translate to. We'll use independent. Yeah, those air sounds are not good. We'll release them. We'll go back and we'll hook up to those. Um... Oh, 
Oh dear lord. What is that? Oh dear lord. Alright, let's get some weight on the back of here. Slow down a hair. Cha-chang. We are on there. Let's go ahead and check the horn out, too. Is that A200? I mean, it's... It's a horn. It's not very good. I didn't expect it to be very good. Um... Like, the exterior sounds okay, the exterior sounds better than the interior, but it still sounds like one of those horns where it's kind of, you know, chopped up and put in the wrong order type of thing. Um, I don't know, that doesn't, doesn't sound all that great. Alright, let's pull these uh, down yonder. One nooch. So we got a little weight on there, so it feels a little bit better, doesn't lurch, and then it just did that. So the windows don't seem to change the audible occlusion. It just makes a window noise, that's it. Alright, so that's notch one. We got this stuff stretched out. Let's give it another notch. The the motor or amp gauge is kind of whack. It just like jumps up. There's no there's no like build up. To how the needle would I think prototypically act is it buying like on off I, I, I think it would generally raise up to you know loaded amperage instead of just boing a boing notch three <laughs> oh man you know, an attempt was made. I get it. They're alcos. They smoked like an emmer effer. They really, really did. I get the attempt there. Um, but it, that that could have definitely been better as well. Notch four. Like as soon as you throw it to another gear, or uh, notch. I mean, that that's how alcos kind of worked with with that smoke. It was. It was. It would dump fuel, you know, just raw fuel in, and just boom, you get that big black poof. Uh, but it tended to last a little longer than just pop. Not six, seven. cut it off the uh, the Alco 244 v16 sounds are we're about to pass a red door signal here um, they're not great either like they're, they're similar I get it it's, it can be hard to get proper Alco sounds especially for one of these suckers um, you know they're very similar they're very Alco y sounding uh, they just you know, they don't seem to have any kind of, like, customization to them. It's just, like, you know, a couple of different, you know, speed revs of sound and just, you know, repetitive. See, you can kind of hear some of the sound clips, like, butting up into each other. That right there, that da 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 da. It's like an old western, like somebody's on a horse running from a bandit or something. It's like da 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 da. It just literally did it right then. Then again, yeah, it doesn't doesn't sound all that great. I'm not hearing very much, uh, like joint or flange sound. Oh, let's check the bell out. Interior bell's all right. That's not too bad. 
Man, that, that horn. The horn literally in inside, it sounds like it's in mono. Just one channel. <laughs> oh, man. The bell sounds okay interior-wise. Exterior-wise, it sounds like that old DTM bell. It might not be. But, uh, you know, when you're when you're poisoned with that old DTM bell for so long, everything sounds like a DTM bell. All right, just see what happens. Let's notch eight. <laughs> God. Do they lurch forward like that? Smokey! Well, it certainly doesn't feel overpowered, uh, not by any stretch. The smoke thing is kind of gimmicky. It would be nice if it lasted a little bit longer and wasn't just like a giant black cotton ball. Uh, because the the standard exhaust effect, you know, looks a lot better. It could be darker, but uh, that honestly doesn't look too shab. Too shabba dabba ding dong Overall, it's a nice model. It really is. The interior definitely could use some better texturing. The controls kind of make me very angry kind of with the way that they react to your to your to your presses and clicks and controls and things it's just extremely maddening uh, it's just not very fluid and then some things are almost too fluid where it's like one one tap of the key and it goes through like you know 50 different settings it's I don't know certain certain things like that drive me nuts you can see the uh the gaps in a lot of the model here which like that right there just is not nice the interior um you know it's, it's on the right track pun intended no uh it just wasn't modeled or shaded that well in here sadly uh exterior same as well exterior looks pretty good honestly like the model of this thing it's it's got a nice color it's not just black like dtm stuff um you know, just, again, could have used some, some weathering here and there and all that good stuff. But uh, that is the PA. The Alco PA. It's it's definitely a decent-looking model, though. All right, let's go look at something else. Check out... All right, the Alco FA. Like the PA for passenger, the FA was for freight. This is a DTM model. I'm going to try not to spend too much time on this thing. We've seen a myriad of these with uh, retro packs coming with different routes lately. <sighs> anyway, the FA. Diesel built to haul freight. Also another Alco and GE partnership. Built 1946 to 1959. Uh, they built about 1,400 some odd units. They had 1,500 horsepower. They also had an Alco 244 v12 turbo whereas the uh the v16 was on the pa so it had uh more i'm just saying more also turbo of course uh bobo truck so not coco like the thing we just looked at uh new york central i think had jesus they had like 44 of these the fa's anyway and then they had 23 uh booster units numbering 1000 through 1043 and then later on, the change down the road from 33-something to 33-something. Alco FA. Here we go. Uh, numbers overlapping the logo, which doesn't look very good. Um, you know, the, the lines look okay, I guess. You can, you can see how they go down below where this line would be right here. Um, you know, it's, it's DTM. Uh, yeah, we've seen these a lot, a lot of times. A lot, a lot, a lot of times. Uh, we got the little, little cotton ball exhaust. Is, is that sound new? I don't know if that sounds new or not. Does that sound old, FA? Because to me, you know, the 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 PA was a V16. This is a V12, but this sounds bassier. I don't want to say it sounds better, but it sounds bassier and a little more authentic, if you will, uh, than a PA. Coupler looks a bit doggish. Um, Yeah, 
Is that the same? Oh, dear lord. No! No! Oh, sweet Jesus, Joseph and Mary. Okay, thank God the PA didn't have that. That is, that is not cool, man. All right, interior kind of still looks assy. Uh, you know, it's DTM. There's, there's like no shading. It just, you know, it's, you can literally just look at it, and I don't have to speak, which I'm sure a lot of you would be fine with. Uh, you can just look at it and judge for yourself. Uh, you know, some people are fine with this. Again, it, it's kind of shocking, but they are, and that's all right. Uh, at least the seats in this thing look okay compared to the thing we were just in. It's probably the most realistic-looking thing in here. Uh, control stand and dash. Uh, uh, see if it has any extra bits and bobs here. Window. I can usually do doors. You know, like, again, this, this would have been cool back in the day. But it's, you know, it's like... It's uh, 2023. Let's let's start seeing some new stuff. Let's let's stop reusing the same thing and slapping a new paint on it. Saying, but it's technically new because it's got a new paint and advanced brake scriptage. You know, it's it's. Let's do something new, guys. Let's do something new. Here's our selector. Makes no noise. Again, kind of irritating to operate. We'll leave it in one. Headlights. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks, Xbox controller. You're the best. You're the best. All right, bright. Yeah, DTM flares or DTM flares. Cab light. Mm. Gauge light. Wife, I don't even really want to look at this thing. I know it may not seem fair, but I don't care. It's uh, you know, it's DTM, FA. All right, advanced breakings released or something. On, is it gonna let us go? There we go. Notch eight. What the hell? Man, that watch eight there. Yeah, that, I I don't even know what I was gonna say, but that loop was horrible. Look at the look at the tinting on the window from the wiper there. Like oh bright and then dark, gloomy skies. Oh dark. Oh, it's 2023, guys. Luckily, the RS3 came with this and already pretty much know what that looks like. All right, that is your Alco something. All right, third loco in the lineup is, of course, the Diesel Workshop Alco RS3, which is quite interesting that it is a part of this route uh, that they kind of collaborated because it is a really, really damn good North American locomotive. And if you've been kind of weird about not buying something off Steam, uh, you know, you don't want to use your card or PayPal or whatever the hell, this is the perfect time to get the RS3. I mean, the thing is almost worth the 30 bucks this costs by itself. And then you get a whole route with it. So this is, uh, so we got G-Trax Loco, DTM Loco, and uh, Diesel Workshop Loco all within this pack. And there are two variants. I'm going to assume the passenger variant, which is on the left, just has different uh, brake pressure uh, than the one on the right, which is freight. But I'm not going to go over this thing too, too much because I already made about three or four videos on all the ones they released. Uh, you should be able to find the video on this New York Central RS3 if you want to see a little bit more about this locomotive than, than what I'm going to cover. But uh, the RS3, of course, is another Elko. Uh, built by Alco and MLW, which is Montreal Locomotive Works. 
1950 to 1956. They built 1,418 units. They had about 1,600 horsepower, and they had the 244D Prime Mover V12 Turbo Coco. Coco, six wheels, or no, Bobo. Did I just say Coco? Something slipped something in my water. Yeah, they're, uh, they're Bobo, not Coco. Four wheels per side. Anyway, it is a really, really good locomotive. It looks fantastic. I'm going to assume that not a whole lot has changed about it. You can see their little emblem there on the side. He's a workshop. And they sounded pretty good by default. And uh, I'm going to back up just a minute because they're kind of loud. So it's kind of funny listening to all the different 244 and, and Alco Prime Over sounds in this pack when they are largely the same, uh, save for the size of the cylinders, uh, so to speak. Some have minor differences, but they're largely the same. So it's interesting hearing all the different types. This being definitely one of the better sounds like when it released... Uh, but what's kind of funny about this is Diesel Workshop pulled all the RS3s and then put them all back on, save for one. You guessed it, the New York Central one. And I guess this is why, because it was going to be part of this pack. I'm not totally sure, but take that as you will. Uh, they look fantastic. I'm not really going to look at them, but uh, we will hop in here and see if anything's changed. As far as I can tell by the looks, nothing's changed. Uh, luckily, the it doesn't seem the, the bogus uh, advanced braking thing got put in here. Uh, as you can see, the interior and the cab in this thing is easily the nicest out of all the locomotives. Cab light looks fantastic. Probably has the same horn. I think it's a Wabco. Uh, it's hard to hear without one over there chugging. But uh, it's a damn good sounding horn in the bell, of course. That might actually be different. I don't remember the bell sounding like that, but it sounds pretty good. We'll go ahead and throw it forward. It's got nice switch sounds. You can, of course, open the windows. Like, this stuff is top-notch right here. And these things are generally about 10 12 15 bucks from Diesel Workshop. I would highly recommend just about everything they have made because it is, it is top-tier as far as, you know, the nicest stuff in, in you know, Train Sim Classic right now for North American content hands hands down easily not even really a debate i mean yeah some people like you know shovelware and that's fine but uh this is it you know there these guys right here are definitely one of them turn the lights on all right so for whatever reason uh in the infinite wisdom of the developers they decided to make the headlights look like ass to make them look like the headlights from the other locomotives that look like ass. Why in the hell would they do that? Okay, that's stupid. You can you can see the lights are on. These things have a very nice headlight glow uh, by default on their own. So that is very interesting. Why in the hell uh, did they do that? I, I'm a bit confused here. Number board lights, fronts, class lights. Class lights look the same. See, this is what this is what lighting should look like. Even the glass on there and the lighting. Again, I'm gonna try not to go too too deep into it. That's what it should look like. But those headlights look. Why in the hell would you change an incredible looking headlight to that just to get it to look like the other ones, which look like crap? How about hear me out? How about make the other ones with the shitty lights better? What do you think about that? I think that's a fine idea, personally. Yeah, that's that's off. That's on. So I, you know, I I guess they didn't want it to stand out, um, you know, apart from all the other ones and how bad their lights are. The brakes on this aren't going to have the uh, very irritating advanced braking deal. Um, they should work fairly simple. They have a nice sound. All right, let's give her a little juice. Let's see what the needles do compared to the last two we looked at. 
See, it's got a nice build up. It's it's not like bam, and then you're you know your back of your head's hitting the freaking door back there when you take off on one notch. It just creeps. None of those are going to do anything right now. I think they generally do. Here's your uh, load meter amp gauge. These do look a little better. I mean, the gauges look fantastic compared to the other ones, but they still kind of move a little quick instead of, like, gradually going up. But it is what it is. They're a little nicer. The exhaust as well is very good-looking exhaust. Um, you know, sure, it's not thick, black, crazy Alco smoke, but just just overall, the, 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 the smoke, the exhaust out of the diesel workshop locos look great absolutely great you got some wheel slips so I try to throw it notch six right there or five and I'll get a wheel slip and these things weren't super powerful but uh, it's fairly easy to control and it's that's our sander there but it's easy enough that it's not like overdone, kind of like the PA, where you know normally you can just get in and go. This has got enough little you know bells and whistles, so to speak. But it's not to where you know it's a pain in the ass to operate, if you will, just just by the way the control surfaces move in relation to whatever key you press on the keyboard. Uh, this is a nice locomotive. It's uh. Absolutely beautiful modeling. The paint looks fantastic. It could use a little weathering, but it's, you know, it's it's got it, man. The Diesel Workshop stuff is very nice. Uh, sounds to boot. You know, again, the sounds are a little tinny. Sound like you're listening to it through, like, a, a single channel or something. But they are definitely uh, the better of, of all the Yalco sounds so far. So again, I'll try and put a thing in the top right-hand corner if you want to see more about the RS3 from Diesel Workshop, which comes within this pack, uh, and I go into that in, in much more detail. Okie dokie, last and probably least, uh, the Alco HH600. Actually, this thing's probably better than the, uh, than the Alco FA from DTM, if I'm honest. Uh, so, HH600 diesel switcher, uh, very early diesel switcher, Bobo, uh, trucks. Uh, New York Central had six of these, numbering 614 through 619. And then the Boston and Albany had five units, numbering 680 through 684. And those are the numbers you see there. And, of course, it says Boston and Albany on the side. Uh... These were funky little switchers, man. I love little underpowered switchers like this. I always have. Um, you know, they got a six-cylinder, which is fairly small, uh, and it was a Macintosh and Seymour 531 Prime Mover, which is probably one of the most rare Prime Movers ever in American Diesel. Uh, they had 600 horsepower, hence the HH600. So just a little bit more about these there were there were several different versions of these and they typically had whatever that was hh 800 900 whatever uh that's typically what the horsepower was uh built in 1932 this is before world war ii it's crazy through 1939 at 78 units uh and actually alco's first production diesel switcher this little sucker right here it's been in train some classic for a long, long, long time. And honestly, it never was really all that bad. It, it never looked that bad. It's a, It was a, a pretty damn top-notch model at the time. It, it still kind of is, all things considered. Um, it looks like it might have actually gotten a, a bit of freshening up. There's still some plasticky bits like the pilot, uh, <laughs> the hose... The coupler, just some of this down in there could use some 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 griminess, if you will. But the uh, the trucks, buggies, everything, undercarriage looks pretty good. You know, they're they're kind of weathered. I'd, I I would have liked to have seen something like this on the Alco uh, PA. You know, just a little bit of corrosion, just a little bit down there. But uh, it's just a cool little locomotive and and cool little model as well. The thing is tiny. Got a plate over here. American Locomotive Co. Schenectady. Schenectady. It's a fun word. 
680 numbers look good. They represent well. Boston and Albany as well looks pretty centered, and the uh, the the font and all that looks pretty legit. Here's the front of it. You gotta keep in mind this thing is. Was this a direct part? A lot of you are probably going to know a lot more than me. That's for damn sure. Was this a port from MSTS? The headlight does not look all that great, obviously. Um, you know, but exterior-wise, it, it, it looks okay. The grab irons actually look pretty decent. This might be new. This might have been freshened up a bit. The, uh, the diamond plate isn't all that nice. It's it's a little bright. It'd be nice for, or a little bit darker. Um just messier overall but just a little diesel alco switcher just super cute super cutie cutie patootie neat little engine that's your fan up there which is not dynamic it just animates all the time let's get inside this thing ah! okay it's horrible yeah, these brakes are not good, man. Let's let's do something new with the brakes, cause that's uh, it's not that great. Um, the interior this looks a little different. It looks a little freshened up a, a tiny bit. I mean, it it probably would have had to have matched the coloring with the railroad. Um, I'm pretty sure you can open the windows. Yes, you can. I think that does the door open. Yes, it does. Can you open the other side here? There's your uh, handbrake there. But yeah, this this is over 10 years old now, or just about. And look how good this looks in comparison to like... I hate to do it, but I'm going to go with DTM. You know, it's, you know, even if this was freshened up, this is largely something from many, many, many years ago. There's your heater down there on the floor. There's your Sanda. Yeah, it's a cool little locomotive, man. This thing with a... a a, you know, like a nicer coat of paint on it, maybe, and some better headlight flares. I'd use this thing absolutely. It's it's a neat little locomotive. I'm a sucker for the little switchers like this. Here's the control stand. It's got a lot of uh, stuff, if I remember correctly. Motor control, marker lights. We'll go ahead and turn all these on. Cab lights. Turn it back off. Headlights. Wait, that was the headlights, was it not? Far dim, a multiple unit. Rear light. Where's the front light? Front bright. Yeah, again, it's just like that white color. And it's got that crappy flare. Guys, you guys that make these, can, can we just maybe add like a little bit of color so it's just not solid white across the board? Because that's not how lights look, you know? Unless you're like in a freaking Ikea, then lights look like that. But... You know, for the most part on trains, they do not. It's, uh, from what I hear, it's not that difficult. There's your, uh, cap control fuel pump. All that good stuff. What do we got down here? Get over on this side. You can open this door. There we go. This is a nice, a nice little model here. It really, really is. Let's give her some juice. Once you, once you turn on the lights, you know, it's not... <laughs> not as great but that's that old original horn this thing had and the uh, I think the RS1 had the same horn as well bell yeah I mean it like it's it's right but it doesn't sound good and there's you know there's eons between those two things in that statement so because I've heard the argument. Oh, this is recorded directly from... But yeah, it's... You know, editing and implementing and all that are two totally different things. One notch, it lurches forward. You know, it's very old. It's going to have old physics. Two notches. It's got a little smoke. Three notches. Four notches. Five notches. Six, seven, eight... And that's pretty much it, guys. That's um, that's all the locomotives. This thing sounds just like the the old HH 600 from days of yore, and the Al Alco RS1 as well. Um, again, you know, they, the 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 argument may be made does real sounds. 
you know, but they, they don't really sound good, per se. Um, but anyway, that, that's what this thing sounds like. But it is a neat little locomotive. I will absolutely give it that. It looks pretty nice inside, all things considered. For its age, I mean, you know, I'm saying this comparing it to stuff that, re that released just in, in recent months. That, that should be freeware, which you're expected to pay for, which literally looks like the same stuff from, you know, over a decade ago. So, in terms of that comparison, yeah, this, this thing is pretty nice. But, uh, I reckon it's time we go ahead and check out the route. Alrighty, so, it's only fitting that we start here. Uh, this is South Station, um, in Boston. And if you're familiar with Boston Providence, like I said earlier, from Train Sim World 3, this is the same terminus. This is the end of the road for the Northeast Corridor uh, as it stands now. So one of the things I'm noticing right off the bat, and what I noticed from the media pictures when they started talking about this route, for whatever reason, uh, the, the vehicle loft is modern. These are very modern cars. So it doesn't exactly look right. If this is supposed to be like late 50s, 60s, even these, these are like late 70s, 80s. Um, I do see that they got some Massachusetts tags on there. That could be from the other uh, route um, that runs through Massachusetts. Was it Springfield? Uh, something, something. This is basically the other way, this route here. But uh, anyway, we're just going to look around the route itself now. This is Old South Station here. The bay is actually right behind us. Um, and then we're going to just uh, head west there and take a look. The The little platforms here look pretty good. They do look old. You know, it's it's interesting seeing older renditions of, of you know, what something looks like now. And this is a, a very busy area, and it's built up a lot. Uh, and it does look totally different, save for the end back here. Uh, now in modernity, there's, you know, it still kind of looks like this for the most part. It's just over here. you got, like, a big parking garage and overhang and all that good stuff but this is the old station back here very large station got the bird up there um you know it's 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 nice enough uh you know 3d asset wise um the uh the surrounding buildings and everything look mm, pretty appropriate for the area and uh era um you know so that's not too shab so, you know crane over there that yeah, that might be appropriate for the era as well. Uh, something that's interesting about stuff like this is generally, so this is for freight, and these most definitely are not here nowadays. Uh, but it was, you know, express freight, generally boxcars, they just slide them in here. It's pretty cool, almost like, uh, you know, a semi-truck depot or something like that. Um, it's a nice-looking little, uh, nice little area. It's a big line going right through that door. It's a magical door. It's Narnia behind that door. But uh, you should see a lot of these all through the route. We, of course, have the nice tracks again. Some of the nicest tracks for North American Train Sim, uh, luckily, are in a lot of the G-Tracks uh, routes and whatnot. But uh, the area, you know, looks pretty nice. we got this little extra bit over here, which is definitely not here anymore. Probably some more freight, way freight mail, something like that, possibly. And then we got... Some old school semaphores, which uh, are pretty neat. Uh, it's neat to see something like that. Um, you know, a North American train sim in this. This gantry looks pretty good as well. Um, I don't want to take a stab at saying it's new. It could be from the other New Haven Springfield route. Um, but it looks good. You know, it's nice and, and crusty and, and weathered and all that. Got the old towers down here, which I'm 900% sure are not there any longer. There's a huge building here now. This bit goes underground. The uh, the whole station, uh, or most of the station, way back in the day, like the 1800s, used to be uh, underground. And uh, it existed for a long time, and I think it was turned basically into storage. This is the yard down here where we were. These are your weighted lift bridges. That looks very nice across. You got some nice grass, shrubbery, bushes, uh, some trash loft, little bits and bobs here and there, which, you know, make the, the, the area seem alive. And also, for what it's worth, I am using uh, the new Armstrong Powerhouse Weather Pack, so that is not the default 
uh, chocolate smear sky that you will see. Um, just Kuju or whatever the hell it is. Uh, but yeah, these, these semaphores and the little gantries look pretty good. Pretty good. Here's the, uh, the loco setup back here in the yard. Here's the old uh, roundhouse, which most definitely is not here any longer. This is all MBTA and Amtrak storage back here presently. Got some freight stuff yonder. Might as well go ahead and show you where we're at on the map, by the way. This is right here. This is the entire map. It's a big end, guys. It's a big un. You know, if you're used to, like, North American routes of trains in the world that are, like, 13 feet long, this is massive. Still had the old balloon loop back here. I honestly didn't realize that was a thing. I, th I thought that was new. That's back there. You got the canal over here, which looks pretty nice. Good looking seawall. Got little bits of, uh, you know, cattails or whatever growing out of there, which is nice. You got the water line along there, all the grime and stuff. This looks good. Nice little area here. Nice little area. We got the Boston and Albany Freight Station. This is very cool. I like seeing a decal on there. Specifically for freight. Got the Railway Express Agency, Boston Freight Station. That's new, if I'm not totally mistaken. You might want to move your car there, buddy. Might be in trouble later. And of course, the truck's backed in, whether it went out via truck or uh, train. Got some nice looking era appropriate lamp posts as well. Let's keep on moving. There's so much to look at. I'm not I'm not gonna be able to look at the whole thing. It would just take forever and ever and ever. I'll leave that up to you if you choose to purchase it. Got our speed boards down here, a couple of dwarf signals. That looks nice. That's very cool. These are nice. Are these new? Yeah, those look pretty nice. I can't think of what they'd be from. They gotta be new. Are they new? They gotta be. You got signs on here, which is kind of cool. So that's, uh, what's that? What's that bay called? Bo Boston Bay? It's called like Quincy, isn't it? Because I saw the name here and it made me think of that. So it's actually got appropriate signage on here for uh, Logan Airport, which is just actually across the bay back there. You're not going to be able to see it. Uh, and in Quincy, 1 and 3 South. More signs right there. To Worcester. Those of you not familiar, I only know it because I've heard of uh, locals calling it that, like Worcestershire sauce, because it looks like Worcester, but uh, people say Worcester from from these general uh, regions, so it's Worcester or Worcester. This through here looks very nice as well. All the grass down here in the uh, cement barricade. Got another tower. Stuff was being built. Uh, Boston has pretty much always been booming. Does look very nice through here. The line will split up. So the line that you may be familiar with uh, from Boston to Providence is going to split to the left up here. And there it goes. That away. And then this is the way that we will continue, I believe. Got some uh, 1962D rail fans chilling. Yeah, there's there's enough, um, you know, urban scenery around that, you know, it looks decent, uh, you know, from track level. You know, you're going to be down here, right? So that looks good. This genuinely looks pretty good. It looks like some care was definitely taken around here. But, you know, if you go up, it just... In some areas seem a little bland, but think about it. I mean, like this over here, why, why are you going to be putting grass and shrubs and all that down just to tax, you know, some some precious frame rate and, and train some classic? Because you're not really going to see stuff like that. So, so it's a nice use and uh, disuse of uh, flora. There's Back Bay Station yonder. Yonder there. This is the uh the the boston uh providence route like from train some world i'll just keep referring to as that the old station looks pretty nice a little, little platform here keep zooming on down this this looks a little bare 
Uh, if I'm completely honest, gosh, we got we got so so much to look at. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. So it it does show that that line goes through here, yeah. What am I? Am I losing my friggin' marbles? Oh no, that's that. God, I'm an idiot. Yeah. Okay, that goes that away. That is not. A building being built there. That's pretty neat. I mean, you're not really going to see it, but little details like that are always nice to see. A, a lost R. That's the Charles River, by the way. The Charles. Charlie's River. Okay, here it is. There we go. All right, let's keep on zooming. This through here does look really bland. Um, there's like no grass or bushes or anything through here. It just looks super plain. This over here, uh, yeah, that doesn't look so nice through there. Good generic railroad property sign. Is it going to let me go under here? It is. Surprising. That's some more of the uh, newer age searchlights here. So you kind of transition from semaphores to searchlights, but they should be all up and down the route. Uh, this facing through here looks pretty good. It'd still be nice to see some some just general garbage and and greenery dotted all along through here. If I'm if I'm completely honest. Yeah, some of this it's just that's just a little bare for for my taste. Personally. And there's Fenway Pack, home of the Boston Red Sox. One of the most coveted sporting uh, facilities in all of the northeastern U.S. I'm not a Red Sox fan, so I could give two ripperonis. All right, so left and right, so we've got an option here. Let's see. Beacon Pack. I'm going to. Try and stop the JFK impersonations at some point. Got a little signal house there. That don't look like much. Yeah, this just kind of looks like something that uh, maybe AI trains use. Maybe you're not really supposed to go that way. So this looks good right here, right? The uh, the foliage track side here. This over here, not so much. I was just left bland, and you start seeing jaggies. Um, so that was an interesting design choice. Uh, it, it almost looks unfinished. Um you know, because some parts look really nice. And then you see some parts like that back there, which just don't. we got another station here, which looks pretty nice. There will be plenty of passenger stuff to do, not just freight. Some more search lights. Got a yard limit sign. It's a beacon. Big friggin' yard, bro. Bro. Um, yes, very large yard here. we got some industry over here as well, right on the Charles. Looks like uh, some some railroad stuff. Maybe one of the places that makes some nasty creosote railroad ties. You got all the trucks lined up. That's pretty cool. I mean, it's a bit shit that they're all just blank, you know? And, and the ground around this yard doesn't look all that great. This is another place where, you know, little, little bits and bobs of, of shrubs and grass and whatnot would just fill this out so, so nicely. Um, this, you know, this basically looks akin to something you'd see just like this root-wise for North American content, uh, you know, eight years ago. Not much changed in that department, it would seem. Um, but, you know, some of these little neighborhood bits look nice, and this, you know, foliage is pretty thick through there, which is good. There's, uh, it's, it's just odd. It's like there's some parts that are just meh as hell, and then there's some parts that look... Nice, like they were Russian, like Vladimir. No, um, you know, but but just obviously didn't finish certain bits. Well, telegraph cables, wires there. Alston, nice looking little station. Yes, thank you very much. Once again, Xbox controller. I very much appreciate that. Why don't we just go ahead and switch to the Xbox controller? Looks pretty nice through here. I think some of these stations are new completely. I don't know if that one is. It's cool how you can see downtown Boston in the background there. Old building here. That looks pretty nice. That's old, like, photo texture looking stiff. 
All right, and we'll just keep on scooting this way. There's going to be a ton of little industries and all that just dotted all over this place. I mean, it's friggin' greater Boston. Uh, so we're not going to look on every little spot, but uh, let's scoot down the road some. Here we go. Here's a nice little area. This is Newton. Newton. Um, platform here looks pretty nice. The cars look pretty pretty wrong i mean that truck looks good that's about era appropriate but all them cars are not i don't get the understanding with that i'm sure i am absolutely certain we're going to see some some high iron slash dtm retro pack specials for this route sadly so maybe that's what it's got something to do with um but yeah it looks looks okay through here um that looks really nice up there as a matter of fact these buildings may be new here Speak of the devil. A nice old looking colonial building there. I'm some I'm sure that's got some historical importance. Um the old retaining wall there. Uh some foliage here. It's a bit bright, a lot of it, and I think a lot of the, the issue is just the ground textures and how bright they are and how different things look, you know, between tracks and grass. And wayside and stuff like that. It's uh, that's that's one of the biggest things, honestly. Train Sim could use is just some new friggin' ground textures, something new, instead of reusing the same old, same old. Just the scenery up there on that hillside doesn't look too fresh. Very bare and just kind of muddy. Let's move on down here. Got a nice little church there. That embankment looks good. Pretty clean. Got another station. Oh, we got a little smoke coming out of this one. This has got to be new as well. It's a nice looking building. That's, this is a little too sharp to be. That's, this can't be reused. That's got to be a new, because uh, there are supposed to be a lot of new assets and buildings in this. It's got that old smoke, but who really gives a rip? about uh chimney smoke on a station like that this looks nice so i like the concrete in between the tracks there kind of like a make two platform if you will uh that looks really really nice and smooth yeah some of these areas look really good they look they look era appropriate until you see the cars and then you're just like wait a minute 80s It's a nice little looking area here facing east you can just kind of see boston around a bend there still quadruple track you got your uh cathedral or whatnot over there looks like a couple couple more new buildings those have got to be new they don't really look they don't match anything else uh, a lot of the foliage around here looks like it was done all right too but then you got these other bits that look like the uh the 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 Gosh, what's the what's the second high iron so-called uh, route? And uh, in, in like some of the scenery on that route, when you get closer to West Virginia, it just starts looking bleh, and just bare. It's just these these bad old ground textures. They just don't look good, especially when there's like multicolor like that, and they're just you know you've got these distinct lines between ballast and the the ground textures that is the beauty and absolute importance of grass it hides that stuff use it this is uh riverside right here i think it's called it's a nice looking little area for sure i like the uh the split in the trackage the old semaphores on the gantry there as well. So to the right is the, the line uh, that's going to head on down to Springfield and to the left over here. That actually can loop back around and go back to uh, the back bay station just outside of Boston. But this is a nice looking area. Uh, the building seems to have some weird... I thought it was like floating for a moment. Maybe not. Old signal box or uh, tower there, if you will. Yep, Riverside. Okay, good deal. So it's got the signs with the actual names. Not seeing any logos, sadly. 
uh, which would be nice to have. And, you know, this grass looks, uh, I mean, what am I talking about? There's no grass. It's just bad ground texture. It's like, you know, nuclear waste runoff green. Uh, definitely could use some grass in there. Hell, some gravel, something. I don't know. Um, but, yeah, that, that doesn't look spectacular. The water side bit right here looked pretty good. I do really like all these cattails down here by the water. That actually looks very nice. The water texture itself doesn't look that nice. And then, of course, you got them muddy, super muddy textured embankments like that. So it's just, it's kind of funny when you see this, which looks really great for Train Some Classic. And then it's just like, derp. Nice. Derp. Much derpage. That's uh, definitely an old reused bridge there. I don't know what in the hell that is. Uh, one of the root creators went went loco with the blue spray paint. I've been uh, scooting many, many miles to save you and, and me time just looking at nothing, really. But this is just outside of Wellesley, headed uh, west, which is a fair size little town this actually still may be a bit of wellesley but this looks good through here so we got some nice foliage on the left and the right that embankment looks really good you can tell it's a mixture of actual uh several like embankment type lofts and, and rock lofts that's really damn clean that looks nice that looks really nice uh and then of course the fence and the houses and telegraph poles up there and all that nice little area here nice little area still quadruple tracked yeah, this is uh, Natick, or Natick, however the hell they say it, in Massachusetts. A lot of stairs. Woo, doggy. Yeah, it's a good looking little area here. I do like uh, this area. This is pretty nice. Nice and cozy and uh, detailed. So, what's this here? Uh, where are we at? Where are we at? This has got to be it right here, right? Netic. Netic. So it's uh, Industries. We got some industry back here. Is this some sort of little branch? Okay, so that goes to Saxonville. I have no clue what the hell that is or where that's at. But we've got some industry back here. Uh, there's. Geez, you, you could do a local on a lot of this route, like the, the, the New Haven route that came out many years ago. Virtual New Haven, whatever the hell it's called. And just Industries for days. Days and days and days. So if, if you like switching out industries and all that, getting a switch list going, this, this, is, this is good for that. But, you know, overall, I'm seeing just kind of a general quality that has not changed much over the years. And maybe that's why they went with the $30 price, which I think was fair. You know, I get it. I'm, I'm, I'm not discounting the work and the time and all that. Um, but it's, you know, things need to, to start changing ideally that you know you would think anyway um because because this looks like the bno mountain sub that's the route i was searching for which again had a lot of the same guys working on the same you know project so to speak uh but you know you could plot me down on on one of these curves here and tell me it's bno mountain sub and i would 100 percent believe you because it all just kind of looks the same all the foliage it uses all these you know, old funky ass trees that just don't cut it anymore. Like that one. I hate seeing this tree with a passion. Absolutely freaking hate seeing this tree. That one little boop piece on the top there. I'd rather see 2D trees over that. I hate seeing these trees so much. They just don't look good. You know, some of this is, is starting to get extremely old. Uh, even this old whatever the hell kudzu down here, that 2D, that looks better than these trees. And then you've got like these willow trees, which look equally bad. That's not the one I'm thinking of. But it's always the same trees over and over. Need some new trees. Uh, and, you know, and then and then we'd be in business. I get it. A lot of parts of the country have a lot of different foliage. Uh, these don't look good. I'm assuming that's supposed to be some sort of oak tree. These big, fat, weird, jaggy branches. Uh, this waterside bit down here looks pretty damn good. And uh, this might even be new, this whole this whole cattail uh, vegetation loft. I don't recall seeing that before. It, it just looks too nice. And then it just, like, stops. Derp. Nice. Derp. 
Um, but then the uh, the distant embankments just big yikes, big yikes there. Um, but yeah, just it doesn't really seem like anything has been upped once again. It's it's still a lot of the same assets. Uh, sure, the trackage is different. Sure, the area is different. Sure, some of the buildings, you know, look appropriate for the Northeast and uh, the era. I, you know, I get that. But it's just, it all starts to kind of look samey. Um, you know, and I, I was hoping it wouldn't, uh, it wouldn't all be like that. Some of this does look very nice. So I do like those cattails. It's pretty. We'll scoot down here a little ways, see what we can find. Still quad track. The uh, I mean it. It is pretty through here. It's you know got some rolling hills in uh, eastern Mass. It's uh, it's very lush. It's it's you know it's a nice day with the skybox. It makes things look uh, a lot nicer. Obviously, using our strong powerhouse and railworks enhancer. Um, this crossing looks pretty clean. I think it's the first damn level crossing I've seen on the route so far. Uh, these don't appear to be new. Might have some new little bits on there. Like the sign. But yeah, this looks, looks pretty clean through here. This looks nice. Okay, this is the beginning of Worcester. Uh, looking west. Um, east is behind us there. Uh, probably the second largest well no third largest area uh contained within the route um behind of course boston and the end uh where this rendition ends in springfield um it's another one of those places where it looks like some things were taken care i like they got some some maintenance away stuff going on with some ties stacked back there and rails got a couple of sheds uh train axles and wheels uh, fairly large yard, and it, you know, this, I'm cool with this, personally. You see how it's pretty uniform between the ground texture and, you know, the ballast and the tracks? Why in the hell did that station back in, uh, yeah, 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 what the hell is it called? Framing them. Not look like this. And I'll tell you why. Which, uh, this might be the reason. There's like four or five different guys working on this route, and they each kind of took a section of their own. So, you know, just like with the B&O Mountain Sub, same deal. Different guys working on that, largely the same guys from this project. And different areas will have different looks to them. Some clean, some not so clean, some different usage of certain assets, and just, you know, the way things are placed uh, in the editor. This looks okay. This looks okay to me. That, that weird kind of funky ground texture... Not so much. That's that's an odd decision. Got little bits and bobs down here as well. It's a friggin' huge yard. This is what I'm talking about here. So it's a little different. That there doesn't look too bad. It's not too, 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 too messy. That looks okay. Some of that does. Um, yeah, this is definitely one of the better looking yards uh, so far on the route. Big uh, freight house back here. The old, uh, the old um, train house should be back here as well. Did I just say train house? Jesus Christ! I need to eat some lunch or something. Low blood sugar. Round house, train house. This looks pretty good back, chow. So whoever built Worcester, uh, well done. This looks this looks pretty good. So a lot of this trackage, as with a lot of this route, uh, for those that are unaware, have largely changed. Uh, there is not this much rail and ribbon down uh, any longer. Uh, it's CSX mainly. Uh, I think a lot of it's an intermodal yard. And that is, you guessed it, like every other friggin' station in America, Union Station. Yes, it gets confusing. Uh, this this is the old Union Station here, uh, which is a damn good looking asset. The thing looks 
you know, look it up. Look up Union Station, Worcester, and it looks friggin' one to one. It looks really, really nice. That's a really nice asset. Um, it it sticks out in the skyline. It's just uh, get out of the way, building. Elevated through here a bit. That looks damn good there, man. That looks damn good. I don't know who built this area, but uh, kudos, GG. I mean, they you know they they had to build this. They couldn't. Uh, you know, there's nothing to be reused uh, to use this asset from. So, even little bits of HVAC on the roof there. That's pretty neat. That there doesn't look super duper great. But yeah, that's that's a good looking station there. Damn, Worcester's looking nice. This old uh, tower in the distance, the Worcester uh, clock tower, that looks pretty legit too. Uh, that's about where it is, by what it looked like. I think it got dismantled uh, as of somewhat recency. I, uh, I don't think much of that is there anymore. And so again, looking at the uh, beautiful Union Station of Worcester, that line to the left that uh, diverges on to the Albany line here goes to, I think it's called Gardner, uh, up northerly. And then that way, of course, goes back towards Boston. Let's see if I can actually find the... There it is. There's the roundhouse. I think I was over here a minute ago when I said train house, like a dingus. Yeah, here's what I'm talking about. These ground textures just don't don't look that great anymore they're just there's too much going on um you know in instead of using these kind of ground textures maybe use a more uniform ground texture and then replace what all this messiness is supposed to look like with actual things of what they're supposed to represent um yeah i think that's old coaling tower there so in the 50s, the B&A still ran steam up and down here, if I'm not totally mistaken. But, uh, you know, diesels were paving the way, so to speak. Uh, and it might have been a bit more odds and ends seeing steamers, uh, you know, pulling revenue. But uh, they were definitely still in use. But hot damn, man. What, uh, Worcester looks pretty good. This is very nice. Uh, whoever did Worcester... GG, that looks great. And the hillside back there and everything, the old clock tower there. It's uh it's a pretty area. This is a very pretty area. And before we go too much farther west, this is Worcester New Haven. So this is the uh some of the New Haven uh trackage right areas and, and uh lines through here. As you can see they go up under the uh the b and a and then up on top there so it's sort of like an interchange i guess you could think of it as that's so all new haven there all right i skipped way ahead and went down to springfield which is the extreme western anchor of the line this is currently where we're at now uh you know down in worcester that was just that's way over here so that's as far as we got that's how much of this track there is and and, and largely, it's it's woodland, uh, you know, hilly, nice, pretty countryside all through there. And uh, just, just a bit too much to kind of go through in the video. So I'll skip down here, and we'll look at some of the stuff down here as well. This, of course, is Springfield. This was represented in the uh, Virtual New Haven Railroad uh, a bit, kind of the same era. What was that one supposed to be, Virtual New Haven? I think the 40s, maybe. I don't remember. But, uh, again, large yard. Looks pretty good. Uh, looks pretty appropriate for the era. Um, and again, whoever built this yard, yes, keep doing this. Yes, 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 yes. Do this. Don't do that weird ass like ground texture that doesn't match the distinct lines of the ballast. It just does not look good. So we're facing east. See old roundhouse there. Another old colon tower. Scooch on this way. Now, I don't remember much of uh, Springfield and the uh, Virtual New Haven line, but it obviously did not continue much farther east to Boston like this does. Um, geez, that uh, building right there might be new as well. But a lot of it largely looks the same because, again, it was a, a lot of the same 
well, maybe not a lot of the same guys that helped build, but a lot of the same types of assets, um, you know, here and there. But uh, there's a, the channel or the, the lock and the canal. We're going the wrong way. I am an idiot. <laughs> Jesus. What an idiot. Oh, come on, track load. All right, we'll give it a minute. We'll give it a minute. Springfield, Boston, Maine, that side. Boston and Maine, Chicopee. There's just a lot, a lot of friggin' stuff around here. It's just too much to even... Very famous bridge over here with the little spire doodads. I think that was in the other route, though, so that's not new. Little clock tower over yonder as well. See if they actually got this the signage correct. Holyoke, yeah, yeah. Those look like the correct interstates for this area. This looks like it was freshened up a little bit. Uh, this general area, of course. This looks pretty nice. This, of course, is still Springfield, just like the Simpsons. Yes. Although I think Simpsons supposed to be Illinois. Or maybe nowhere, because it's a friggin' cartoon. You got some more of these, like, uh, what they call express, like, little loading deals here for boxcars and whatnots. Which is, uh, you know, they're neat to see. They they might might have been a little less efficient than, you know, what they do now, but they, uh, they look neat, so to speak. Look very neat. Big old pipes there running across the trackage. Springfield, big town, obviously, um, you know, it's, it's obviously very large and in charge, second to Boston. Uh, Worcester probably coming in a, a, a third. This it almost looks like an unfinished asset. Like it, it looks like it started off good, but it's just missing, I don't know, like I see the lines, but it also looks new. Ish. Yeah, I don't know. Interesting. Let's keep on scooching eastbound. Terrain's much flatter. You can actually see the hills in the distance there. A um, little bit more wide open. But largely looks the same, though. What do we got here? Oak Street. Same kind of theme station here. We got a little uh, freight house back here. A little industry. Get back on the line. It was just busy. You know, a ton of freight came through here. Uh, st still does to a degree. You know, the industries pretty much don't exist. Here's an old driving theater here. Pretty neat little uh, thing like that. Got a bit of a quarry. Can you hear the traffic ambient sound? Kind of quiet down a little bit. Goes back to uh, double track. And starts to get heavily forested again. The North Wilbram. Wilbraham. Nice little looking station. Is that new? Sign's definitely new. Yeah, this little area looks all right there. There are some really good looking areas. Um, I would love to go over each and every one, but uh, I, f I feel like I've kind of gone over about as much as, you know, one could see or look at that's uh, somewhat unique. I mean, a lot of it is just, you know, largely uniform. So here we have Palmer, which is uh, somewhat notable. That way goes back to Battleboro and uh, what is it, Ware River or something like that. This way, I don't remember, but there are yards. It's kind of like an interchange, more of just a crossing. 
But the station here is unique, and uh, it looks pretty nice. Of course, have some diamonds. The old uh, semaphore actually on the station platform here. Danger. Stranger danger. Good looking little station. I mean, all the stations look pretty uniform. Um, but but this one looks pretty nice. It's a good looking area. It is a good looking area. And this is West Brookfield. We are back facing uh, West. How aptly named uh, the station. But a lot of it does look similar. There are little nuances, new buildings. There's obviously a ton of industry to do. Uh, you've got plenty of you know regional passenger high speed trains, if you will. Um, but it it still just looks a lot like the routes from the same group of guys. Um, you know, to a degree. It honestly it looks like a a clone of B and O Mountain Sub to me. It just kind of has that same vibe it's just obviously you know slightly different um yeah I, I don't really know how much more there is to uh to look at we went over all the rolling stock jumped around you know there are some very nice scenic areas i honestly don't think it's that bad at all um you know for for starters just to get it out there plain and simple crystal clear uh i do think it's worth 30 bucks absolutely because you get the new um PA, which may have some shortcomings, but overall the model is nice, and uh, it you know it it looks fairly decent for the most part. I'd say it's above middle of the road, uh, if you know what I mean. And then you get the Alco RS3 from Diesel Workshop, which if you don't have it, that right there makes it almost worth uh, its its weight in gold. And and the whole route, I mean, there's a lot to explore here. There's a lot to do. This is a massive route. It would take you several hours to get end to end. Uh, in one go um, but it's uh yeah it is what it is it's decent i i sure would recommend it especially when it's on sale it's, it's very interesting that it's as cheap as it is i wonder if it's some sort of pricing issue and it'll be fixed um but yeah it's a, it's a good overall route um i'm sure we'll see some nice scenarios and in, in rolling stock in due time for this and you know some old steamers which would be very cool but uh i think from me that's as far as i'll go as always, uh, thanks for watching, guys. I do appreciate it, and uh, enjoy the rest of your day. I'll see you next time.